Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Hello, welcome to A Toast to the Men with your boy, S.D. Booker. Before I get started, hit that like button. Subscribe. Yes, you. You. Hit that like button. Now, before we get started, I also want to shout out my boy, Rico Alexander, man. I grew up with Rico. He's doing good things. Entrepreneur. Um, vegan chef. And he got a few other things going on. Proud of that brother. So, kicking a shout out to him. This is his merch from Dope Boy to Hope Boy. That's Rico Alexander's merch, man. I have a link where you can contact him in the description. So, as you read the title, The Richest Place on Earth. The graveyard is. That's the richest place on earth. Wow. You say, how so? Well, you can rewind this clip and take a look at that, that quote by the great Les Brown. But what he's saying and what he's proclaiming or came to the realization of that the graveyard is the richest place on earth is so true. That's where so many dreams, so many goals have died. That's where so many purposes have gone unfulfilled. The graveyard. There's a graveyard in every city, every small city, functioning city, several, every state, every continent, every country. There are graveyards. And in those graveyards are dreams that were not fulfilled, goals that were not fulfilled purposes that were not fulfilled. Now, you may ask, how do we get to that point? What causes that? Well, my belief is a lack of discipline and focus. You know, discipline is remembering why you're here and what you're supposed to be doing. We lose focus of that. Or some of us have not come to that understanding, what our purpose is. So we die. We die with those dreams and goals and purposes being unfulfilled. Now, what makes it the graveyard the richest place on earth, you may automatically think about money. But money actually is the last thing that I think about when I, when I think about riches. The first thing I think about is knowledge, wisdom, the motivation, inspiration that could have been relayed or delivered, given to the people, to the universe. And this is why I say money is last on the list. Because... When you're disciplined, focused, and living within your purpose, money is a byproduct. Money will come. But wisdom, knowledge, and discipline and focus is not a byproduct of money. Simple. So this is my theory about life and dying. When we come into this world, we're empty vessels, babes, we don't know anything. Not really conscious of what or who we are. But as we begin to develop and progress, we start picking up things, we start picking up knowledge and wisdom and consciousness. And as we progress and age even more, we start picking up why we're here, right? And so you start out empty, but now you start starting to be filled with all this stuff, all this knowledge and wisdom and skill, all this, all this love starting to be filled. 
And so when you get to, let's say you live the ripe age of 80 or 90, you should be full. But my belief is along that way, when you start to get to about 30, 40, 50, all that stuff you've been filled with, you should start giving back. All of that money, all that knowledge, wisdom, all that inspiration, all that motivation, you should start giving back. And so by the time you die, you should be empty. There should be no stone left unturned. There should not be anything in that graveyard with you. You gave everything back to the universe, everything back to the people. And so you should die empty. You came into the world empty. You got full. You released. You should die empty. That's my belief. Now, my other belief is, and I've said this before in a previous video, Earth is just a school. It's a huge school for learning and teaching. The ultimate goal is to reach master teacher level. That's the level Jesus reached. That's the ultimate goal. To get that crown. My belief, just like school on earth, grammar school on earth or, or university or college on earth, graduate school on earth. If you don't pass, if you don't meet the requirements, for that level you're at, that grade you're at, you got to repeat. And so since energy doesn't die, you can't kill energy. You can only kill the physical body. When you die physically, that energy is there and you got to come back. You got to come back and take that course again. Take that course again until you elevate to a different understanding, a different level. So I tell my wife all the time, like, I do so much because I don't want to have to come back and take certain classes on this earth. I, I don't want to, I don't want to learn how to love. <clears throat> I don't want to learn how to give. I don't want to learn how to defend myself because that's a lesson too. I don't want to learn how to make money. I don't want to learn how to acquire knowledge and wisdom. I don't want to learn how to be disciplined. Certain things I don't want to learn how to do. And to be honest, uh, I'm not going to acquire everything in this life. I know that. So some things I'm going to have to relearn, but let's keep it at a minimum. Right? I don't want to have to take, come back and retake five courses. Okay, I'm cool having to retake two, but five or six courses, man, that was wasted. That was wasted life. That was a wasted energy. I'm not trying to do that. So I'm trying to get out of this thing as fast as possible, as easy as possible. No shortcuts, but I'm trying to learn certain lessons so I ain't got to retake them. So again, because we lack discipline and focus and we die not fulfilling our purpose, that makes the graveyard the richest place on earth. Right? Don't be that guy. Time waits for no man. And what happens is most times when people get to the end of their life, they start, they start playing the game of life with desperation. Hail Marys, jacking up threes. Prime example, last weekend during the game, I coach eighth graders. Now, in this league we're in, they will not stop the clock. There is no shot clock, but they will not stop the game clock until the last two minutes of each half. So it doesn't matter if the ball goes out of bounds. If there's a foul, it doesn't matter. That clock is running until the last two minutes of each half. 
Now my start, my, my team started out strong, but we lost focus. We went to sleep, metaphorically, went to sleep, and we found ourselves down 15 points, and we're fighting. We're fighting to get back in this thing, but the clock is not stopping. So time is not on our side. That's life. That's how life works. So I started coaching in a vein of desperation. My player who's having the best game out of all my players was my big man. I had to take him out because I need three pointers. I can't let him pound the ball for five to seven seconds to get his shot. I'll get it, get in position and score. I need to preserve as much time as possible. And I need quick shots, three pointers. He's not a three point shooter. So I got to take him out. He's having the, the best game, but I got to take him out. Desperate. That's life. Don't be that guy. We ended up losing. We ended up losing, but. That's not how you want to play life. I don't even like playing basketball that way. That's not real basketball. Just jacking up threes, playing in desperation. But you definitely don't want to play life like that. Don't be that guy. Stop making the graveyard the richest place on earth. Die empty. Fulfill yourself. Get full. Get full. Learn. Learn. Then teach. Release. Release. Get all you can and release. Remember that. Peace.